guys! Today we are going to read chapter 6 of The Puppy Place, where every puppy finds a home, Chewy and Chica Special Edition <clears throat> by Ellen Miles. Chapter 6 Grr, growled Charles. Yip, yip, yip! Chewy looked up at Charles in surprise. What do you mean? That hurts? The puppy stop, stopped chomping on Charles' thumb. It works, Charles said. He kissed Chewy on the top of his apple-shaped head. Good boy! He grins at Sammy. Charles and his friends were in the backyard playing with Chewy and, and his friend were in the backyard playing with Chewy and training the puppy with a brand new method, Charles' idea. Ch Chewy liked Charles' chin, then the lifting turned into nibbling, then the nibbling turned into biting. Yep, said Charles, grr, yep. Charles stopped, Chewy stopped biting and blinked up at Charles. You don't like that? Oh, okay, then I won't do it. Good boy. Charles said again. He rummaged in his pocket for a puppy treat. Here you go. <clears throat> Charles smiled down at the tiny puppy in his arms. You're learning, he said. You are, you really are. What is going on out here? The back door slammed and Lizzie appeared on the deck with Chica in her arms. She stomped down the stairs and put the puppy on the grass. Chica scampered right over to where Charles, Sammy, and Chewy sat. Hey, bro, I've missed you. Chewy sprang out of Charles' arms and tumbled over his own feet in his hurry to meet his sister. Yay, it's you! Chica jumped on top of Chewy. And Chewy wriggled out from underneath his sister and put a paw across her back while he chomped on her ear. Chica squealed and batted Chewy away. <clears throat> then charged over to jump on top of him and bite his tail. Chewy yipped and rolled over, paw pawing, pawing, pawing madly at Chewy's face, Chica's face. The puppy's rolled and tumbled and chased each other around the yard in a blur of black and brown and white. <clears throat> Chewy stomped near a stops near a pink rose bush to pee and Chica did too. Then they started to dash around again. Charles laughed so hard his stomach hurt. Sammy laughed too. But Lizzie barely cracked or a smile. Why are you two out here barking at Chewy, she asked. We're trying to, t to teach him not to bite people, Charles said. It's my new training, me training idea, and it's working. Charles was proud of his idea because he had come up with it all by himself. Well... In this, a book that puppies learn not to bite from playing with their brothers and sisters, you know like these two were just doing. Did you see how Chica squealed when Chewa, Chewy bit her? That's how puppies learn that biting hurts. Mother dogs teach their puppies too by growling at them when they bite too hard. Okay, said Lizzie. I'm with you so far. Chewy needs to understand that it hurts when he bites. But why don't you just tell him? N no, I hate to yell at him, Charles said. He's so sensitive. If I yell, he, he'll just tremble and look up at me with those big, bulgy eyes of his. I can't take it. I decide that instead of yelling, I would just act like I was Chewy's puppy brother, Charles said. <clears throat> Chewy has to understand that. 
Biting hurts people just like it hurts other puppies. If I don't say anything, he doesn't know. But if Sammy or I bark or squeal, he stops right away. At least, at least for a second. That gives me time to praise him for not chewing. It really works that said Lizzie, is the weirdest dog training idea I ever heard. But hey, good luck with it. You'll still never win our bet because I'm way ahead of you. My 20-minute plan works so well that Chica hasn't made an accident all day. Tomorrow, we all go to the 30-minute plan. Chica's almost ready for a forever home and I'll find her one soon. Chewie's almost ready too, said Charles. The contest isn't over yet, you know. Lizzie sighed and plopped down on the ground next to Charles. She plucked a piece of grass from the yawn and started to shred it. To shred it. Even if we even if we do find homes for Chewie and Chica, that's only two puppies. Then there are all the puppies at the shelter. They need home too. And the puppy mills just keep turning out more puppies to sell to stores like Pet Love. She told Charles and Sammy about the puppies at the store and how she and Maria had decided not to buy anything there, and how Miss Dobbins had already asked Mr. Sneed not to sell puppy, sell puppy male puppies, but he had refused. It just made me so mad. So let's do something about it, said Charles. That's what Mr. Barregard said. But what can we do, asked Lizzie. Charles thought for a moment. What about a petition? Charles liked the idea of petitions. He had recently helped his mom take one around the neighborhood. The petition was a piece of paper with the exam exclamation at the top about why the town needed a new dot soccer field. <clears throat> Charles and his mom convinced a lot of people to sign their names to say they agreed other people who were taking petitions around their neighborhoods too. When they had enough signatures, they would show I'm, I'm having trouble flipping. The petition to, to the people in charge at the town government and say, look, 500 people signed this pet petition that says we should have a new soccer field. Then the town would have to do something about it. Charles' favorite part of the petition was at the top where big old fashioned letters said, We the undersigned. He thought that sounded cool and important, like a phrase right out of history. We could get people to sign a petition against puppy mills. Not a bad idea, Lizzie nodded slowly, but we need more. We need something dramatic, something that that will make people think twice before they shop at Pet Love. She plucked three more blades of grass and began to braid them. By now, Chica had settled on her lap, and Chewy was on Charles. Chewy was snuggled up all cozy and not biting for once. Charles patted him softly. It was great to have a dog that could curl up right in 
their lap. Buddy was already getting too big for that. These chihuahuas sure did love to be close to their people. Charles thought that if he ever had one for for keeps, he would want to slip him into his pocket and take him everywhere. I just know that if uh, if other people <coughs> understood how puppy mills are, they wouldn't want to shop at Pet Love anymore. Then I do. Lizzie threw down her half made more than I do. Lizzie threw down her half made braid. I've got it, she said. Suddenly a protest, like a demonstration. We can march around with signs in from Pet Love. There we'll get all the dog lovers we know to come out with their dogs that will definitely attract attention. Charles had to admit that it was a great idea. It would come to be our first real caring club activity, he said, because we'll be educating people and maybe it will even make that Mr. Sneed think again about sell, selling puppies who come from <coughs> puppy mills. Sammy wanted to run home for cardboard and paint so they could start making signs right away. But just then, the bean came out onto the deck holding Buddy's leash. Puppies! He yelled as soon as he started down the stairs, Chewy and Chica began to yip and yap. Buddy took one look look at the chihuahuas and towed the bean across the yard in the opposite direction. Charles and Lizzie grabbed the chihuahuas' collars. Buddy deserved to be out on his own, own backyard without being chased. Buddy stood in one corner of the yard and barked at the chihuahuas. Chewy and Chica yipped back at him. Even Rufus and Goldie in their own yard next door at Sammy's house began to bark. Charles and Sammy looked at each other <coughs> and shrugged. Then they began to yip and bark too. A second later, Lizzie and the Bean joined in with their own barking. Charles laughed as as he yipped. He wasn't sure why they had all started to bark together, but it was sure was fun. He felt like they were all just one big pack of dogs. Hey, what's all that racket? Dad came out of the back door and glared at them, <clears throat> hands on his hips. Quiet down out here. All you dogs, your mom's trying to get some work d done upstairs. He went over to help the bean control Buddy. Slowly the barking pattered out. That's better, said Dad. Now whose turn is it to set the table? It's almost dinner time. For a few moments between planning the demonstration and barking together, Charles had been having such a good time that he'd forgotten all about the bet. <clears throat> he could tell that the table, it all came back. It was great to bark together. But he had to remember this was war. Sammy nudged Charles. Charles knew th what that meant. Can Sammy come over? He asked. Dad smiled. Charles knew what that meant. To Dad joked sometimes 
that Sammy ate more meals at the Peterson, Petersons than at his own house. Sure, there's plenty for everyone. Charles picked up Chewy. Up. Come on, Sammy. It's my turn, so if you want to stay, you have to help me set the table. <clears throat> Hope you like the job, because soon it'll be your turn for the whole month, Lizzie teased. Once I win that bet, Charles made a face at Lizzie as he and Sammy went went inside. The war was definitely back on. She thinks she's so smart, Charles muttered, gathering, gathering forks, knives, and napkins. Sammy filled water glasses at the kitchen sink and carried them along to the table, spilling only a little here and there along the way. Hey, want to teach Lizzie his, his lesson? Sammy asked as he placed the glasses on the table. As I just thought the best idea, Charles put down the last fork and knife at his dad's place. He looked at Sammy. Sammy had a lot of ideas. Now, <clears throat> not all of them worked out so well, but they were almost always fun in the beginning. What did you have in mind? Chapter 7. Let me look how much pages this chapter is. Okay. Ding! Upstairs, Lizzie's timer went off. She jumped up from the computer where she was busy downloading information about puppy mills. She looked at the tiny puppy who sat alertly by her feet. Come on, Chica, time to go out. Chica squinted back at her and let out a happy yip. Again? Already? Well, okay, fine. With me, I'll go anywhere with you. Lizzie scooped up the tiny pup and headed downstairs. Charles and Sammy had finished setting the table, but dinner wasn't quite ready yet. Good, she had so much to do to prepare for the big demonstration. She had already been on the phone with Maria talking about it. They had decided on Friday, the day after next as the perfect day, Lizzie had already printed out some infor informational brochures brochures about why why puppy mills should be banned she could hardly stand to look at the pictures of the skinny puppies <clears throat> all crowded onto tiny cages she'd saved one on one to give to mom for research for her article and left one on charles bed he could use the facts in it when he wrote up his pension. Lizzie heard Charles and Sammy whisper it and giggle in the living room as she walked by. What were those two up to now? How many times and had Sammy come up with some wild ideas? Idea and then talked Charles into doing something crazy. If you ask Lizzie, she'd say Sammy was a bad influence. He was funny, though. She had to admit that Sammy was, had a joke ready. Outside, Lizzie put Chica down on the grass. The puppy scampered right over to the rose bush where Chewy and she had peed earlier. She 
squatted and peed. Then she cocked her head and squinted at Lizzie. I bet this is why you brought me out here. I, am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Good girl. Lizzie ran over to scoop her up. Oh, Chica, you're really learning, aren't you? What a good girl. She kissed Chica's nose and the top of her head and each of her ears. Chica trembled, and this time Lizzie could tell it was from happiness. Back inside, Chica let out a yip. Hey, bro, where are you? Chewie yipped back from the living room. And here, come find me. Chica ran to find her brother. Okay, Chica, you go play, said Lizzie. She set her timer again and carried it upstairs, reminding herself to write up a description of her 20-minute plan to post on her favorite dog training chat group. The plan really was a success. Soon, she'd be taking Chica out every half hour, and then every hour until in a few days she wouldn't need the timer at all anymore. anymore. By then, Chica would definitely be ready for a forever home. For a forever home. Upstairs, Lizzie knocked up on the door of her mom's study. Mom was on the phone. She held up a hand to Lizzie to wait for a second. Buddy and the bean lay next to mom's desk, curled up together on Buddy's dog bed. Sometimes the bean liked to pretend he was a puppy. Thank you, Senator. I looked forward to meeting with you. Mom finished her phone call and hung up. And hung up. She threw her hands into the air. Yes, that's terrific. Senator Bisbee is willing to meet with me to hear a, more about puppy mills and why our state should make them illegal illegal. Mom was so great. Lizzie gave her mom a high five. Then she thought of something. She was so excited that she started to jump up and down. Buddy got excited too. He scrambled up from his bed and spun around in circles. The bean copied him pretending to chase his invisi own invisible tail. Mom, mom, mom. You have to call the senator back, Lizzie said. Tell him to come to our demonstration. He'll learn everything he needs to know about puppy mills. Mom looked puzzled. Demonstration? Yes. It's our first official caring club activity. Lizzie explained it all about pet loves buying puppies from puppy mills about the plan she and charles from the puppy charles and sammy had come up with even about the idea maria had added that they should advertise a free dog wash so that lots of pet owners would be sure to come by maria's dad was going to ask his friend manny if they could set up the dog wash outside his hardware store. Well, said Mom, you certainly have been busy. What does Miss Dobbins think of all this? She loves the idea, said Lizzie. She told me all the best websites to go to for information about puppy mills. Probably some of the the same ones you've checked out for the article. Have fun. Have Have you seen the one with pictures of Lizzie? Charles yelled from downstairs. You better get down that here 
Uh oh, said Lizzie. With even finishing her sentence, she dashed up up her mom's office and down the stairs. What is it? She asked. Where's Chica? Charles led her into the hallway. He pointed to a puddle on the floor. I guess Chica couldn't wait twenty minutes this time. Oh no! Lizzie looked at Chica, who sat under the phone table in the hall. The puppy squinted back, trembling all over and wagging her tail. Hopefully, who me? Oh, Chica sighed, Lizzie, but she didn't yell or even say no. It was too late for that. The deed was done, and it was probably her own fault anyway. Maybe she could should have let Chica stay outside longer last time. Instead of rushing right back upstairs, she picked up the puppy and ran to the back door, even though it was too late. Lizzie knew that it was good to show her where she should have gone. She set Chica on the grass near the rose bush. The puppy sat there and looked at Lizzie, her head tilted quizzically. Lizzie thought she looked upset. Looked upset. Don't worry about it, Chica. She picked her up and scratched between her ears. Chica loved that. It wasn't your fault, Chica wriggled happily. Me worry? What do I have to worry about? Back inside, Lizzie cleaned up the puddle with paper towels while Sammy and Charles watched. Too bad, Charles shook her head, shook his head, just when she was doing so well, too. Sammy ch clucked his tongue. I guess Mickey Milligan doesn't have to worry about the comp competition from the 20-minute plan of yours. Lizzie gritted her teeth. Maybe you should worry about minding your own business, she said. Anyway, that was just one small mistake. It, it doesn't mean a thing. We don't, we won't let it happen again, will we, Chica? She scooped her up and cuddled a tiny pup next to her face. Chica trembled, and then licked Lizzie's cheek. Lizzie carried Chica back upstairs with her, with her head held high, trying to ignore the whispers and giggling from her annoying brother and his pesty friends. What they did they know about dog training? Downstairs, Sammy and Charles giggled so hard that they could barely manage to smack each other a high five. That was awesome, Sammy gasped. Charles thought of the look on Lizzie's face when she first saw the puddle. Ha, huh, Miss Know-It-All. Know it all sure had got gotten surprise a surprise, hadn't she? Awesome, he agreed. How long do you think we have to wait until we do it again? Sammy asked. When we finally caught his breath again, Charles wasn't sure about that. Definitely, Ch Sammy said. Come on. It was hilarious. Upstairs, Lizzie reset her timer and carried it with Chica back to Mom's study. Everything okay, Mom? Asked. Fine, said Charles. Just a tiny setback. No problem. It was all cleaned up. So, will you call him, please? Lizzie's mom said. I got it that you want me to call Senator Bisbee. And I will, but I have a lot of other research and writing to do on this article. 
so it might not happen tonight. Anyway, it's nearly dinner time, and I don't want to bother him. She spun around on her chair and looked straight at Lizzie. But guess what? I just heard from my friends at the police station. I asked him to try to trace the numbers. Mr. Burgard gave me, you, you know, from the license plate of that truck that sells the puppies. And Lizzie held her breath. He turned up at the truck register to the company named Pretty Pups Incorporated. Lizzie felt her heart start to pound, to pound, so it was a puppy mill. Probably, Mom nodded. I'll find out for sure tomorrow. Sammy's dad and I are heading out there. We'll, we'll pose as a couple looking for a dog. But really, I'll be gathering facts for a story, and he'll be trying to get some pictures. Sammy's dad was a photographer, photographer who sometimes took pictures for Littleton News. Mom, really? Can I come with you? No, Lizzie. Mom spoke gently, but she looked very serious. I don't think you'd want to be there from what I have read about puppy mills. It won't be very a very pretty sight. Lizzie nodded. She remembered some of the puppy mill pictures she had seen online. Skinny, sick looking puppies of every size and shape packed into dark, dirty cages with hardly enough space to turn around in the pictures their sad eyes started stared out from the cages as if pleading save me save me lizzie had already had one bad dream about buddy being trapped in a cage like that seeing the real thing would be probably give her a lifetime worth of nightmares i guess you're right but i can't wait to read the story you write well who knows for sure if there even is a story mom asked we'll find out tomorrow and take it from there lizzie heard charles and sammy come upstairs Again, they whispered and giggled. What were those two up to? Then Chewy let out a big yip, yip, yip. And she, Chica leapt off Lizzie's lap and scampered down the hall to find her brother. Okay, Mom, said Lizzie, but tomorrow before you, you go out to the puppy mill, Will you? Yes, I promise. I'll call the senator and tell him about the demonstration. Thanks, Mom, said Lizzie. She got up and went to find Chica, but on her way to Charles' room, Lizzie saw something that made her gasp, a puddle, just a small one, in the middle of the hall. How could it be possible? The timer had not even gone off yet. And Chica had just peed in the downstairs hall. Lizzie marched down to Charles' room and walked in without a knocking. Sammy and Charles were on the floor playing with the puppies. Charles looked up at her with an expression. Just like Chewy, all wide-eyed in innocent, innocence. Hi, Lizzie, he said. What's up? Lizzie did not want to give him the sad satisfaction of knowing that Chica had made another met mistake. Of Without a word, she just scooped up her naughty puppy and swept her out of the room. 
down the stairs and out the door. She set Chica down by the rose bush and watched as the puppy sniffed around for a moment. Then Chica sat back up at Lizzie and she tilted her head. Now what did I do? Poor Chica, Lizzie said. You, you must be confused or upset or something. Was it because of the way I stomped around all afternoon when I was mad about the puppies at Pet Love? Was that it? Maybe you're really sensitive? Maybe that's it. Lizzie felt awful. Whatever it was, she was sure it was her fault. That Chica was making all these mistakes. The great dog trainer. Ha! Maybe Chica was more of a challenge than she could handle. Lizzie sighed and headed back toward the house. Come on, Chica. It must be almost time for dinner. Up there, Sammy and Charles had watched the whole thing from the store window. Sammy laughed. Not to mention Charles the Chica, the poor puppy, was probably tell, tell her, he suggested. No way. Sammy's eyes were bright, not yet. One more time. Come on, cheese. Don't chicken out on me now. Charles hesitated. Had Lizzie learned her lesson? Would she quit being such a know-it-all? Was she ready to stop acting so sure that she would win the bet? Hmm, maybe not quite yet. Okay, he said, but just one more time. Dinner time, Dad called from the kitchen. Charles gathered his tiny dog into his arm. Let's go, Chewy. The puppy mouthed his, his hands before Charles could even speak. Chewy eased up and stopped biting. Good boy. Charles carried Chewy downstairs in the dining room. Lizzie had just set a big platter of asparagus on the table. Chewy trotted, Chica tr trotted along by her feet. Charles put Chewy down and Chica dashed over to say hello. Tails wagging, the two puppies touched noses and trembled happily as if they hadn't seen each other for days instead of minutes. What? When Lizzie headed back into the kitchen to bring out more food, Sammy elbowed Charles. Now, he whispered. Now, he whispered. Charles glanced around to make sure nobody could see what he was about to do. Then he pulled a small bottle out of his pocket and poured a puddle of water onto the floor. He was careful to get as close as he could to a corner of Mom's beautiful old rug without actually wetting it. Chapter 8, guys. So, guys, we are going to stop right there. And so, guys, I hope you enjoy. Bye!